Hello, Matthews Gatos here. In this video, we'll cover section 1.5, but before we begin that, let's review section 1.4. So in this question here, I'm given a geometric series. I know it's geometric because it has a ratio. I can take any term, divide the term before it, and I get that my common ratio is 3. So I have the sum of this series, they're giving us the sum, is 4,372. And we want to know how many terms are in the sequence. So since it goes on dot, 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 I don't know what t sub n is, which means I can't use this formula. I do know my first term is 4. I'm not going to use this, so I can use my first formula. So the sum is given to me. I know my first term is 4. My ratio is 3 to the n minus 1 all over ratio minus 1. So I have 4,372 equals 4 times 3 exponent n minus 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 2. So since I have a product in the numerator and a number in the denominator, I can divide. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I really have 4,372 equals 2 multiplied by 3 exponent n minus 1. So to get at the end by itself, I have to, first of all, get rid of everything around it. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to start. So I have 4,372, and I'm going to divide that by 2, and I will get 2,186 equals 3 to the exponent of n minus 1. And then let's just add 1 to both sides. So that's 2,187. So since I have a power of 3 on the left-hand side, I'd like to write a power of 3 on the... Sorry, I have a power of 3 on the right side. I want to write a power of 3 on the left side. So what I could do is I could start doing like 3 to the exponent of 1, 3 to the exponent of 2, or I could just go to my calculator for a more efficient way of doing that. So if I go to my calculator, in Y1 I put 3 to the exponent of X, and in my table I can look to see all the powers of 3. And I can see that 3 to the exponent of 7 is equal to 2,187. So that means n is 7, and there are 7 terms in that geometric series. Okay, so in this section we're going to talk about infinite series, and there's this famous math joke, um, and it goes like this. An infinite number of mathematicians walk into a diner. The first one orders a Coke. The second one orders half a Coke. So the first one orders a Coke. The second one half a Coke. The third one a quarter of a Coke. And so on. And the waitress goes, you're all idiots, and just pours two glasses of Coke. So you tell that to a room of mathematicians, and they'll all start laughing. Right now, probably doesn't sound too funny. We're going to come back to this and see why the waitress actually says that. In order to do that, I need to introduce you to infinite geometric series. So sections 1.1 to 1.4 all dealt with finite, meaning ending, series. Now we're going to look at something that doesn't have an end. So an infinite sequence is a sequence that never ends. It has an infinite number of terms. So an infinite geometric series is a geometric series that never ends, which means I can't find a total sum. Well, there's two types of infinite geometric series. There are convergent series, and what that means is the terms get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they converge upon or approach a constant value. That's going to happen any time the ratio is less than 1, it's in between negative 1 and positive 1. So it's less than 1, but greater than negative 1. Or we could write it like this. It's in between negative 1 and 1. The other type of an infinite geometric sequence we're going to look at in a minute. So here's an example of a convergent series. So if I take 10 and I add 5 and I add 2.5 and I add 1.25, etc., hopefully you're seeing that this ratio here is a half. It's getting smaller, so a half each time. So what I did is I generated in my calculator the sum. So the first term is 10, 
The sum of the first two, 10 plus 5 is 15. The sum of the first three, 10 plus 5 plus 20. 2.5 is 17.5. And I kept going. This is just the first 22 terms. Okay? So it doesn't actually equal to 20. But what I can say is it converges upon 20. It gets so close to 20, at some point the calculator is saying, okay, this is 19.9999999. Can we just call it 20? That's what I mean by converging. So it doesn't actually equal to 20, but it gets closer and closer and closer. So at some point, we're just going to call it 20. That would be an example of a converging series. Now a divergent series does not approach a specific value. Now it doesn't approach a specific value because either it gets infinitely big or infinitely small, or maybe it oscillates, like it goes back and forth between two different values or three different values. So the way that we can recognize a divergent series is if the ratio is greater than or equal to one or less than or equal to one. So these series won't approach a specific value. Here's an example. Let's say I had 10 plus 20 plus 40 plus 80. So looking at this, you can see the ratio is two. I'm doubling. I'm getting big. So let's just look at the first three sums. So the first number is 10. So the sum is 10. The first two numbers, 10 plus 20 is 30. So the sum of the first two is 30. The sum of the first three, 10 plus 20 plus 40 is 70. So in my calculator, I've created this table and you can see it gets really big really fast, okay? So since the sum gets bigger and bigger, it actually approaches positive infinity. Now, obviously we can't equal positive infinity, but what we're saying is since I can't add it up and approximate it as a number, it is divergent, meaning the sum does not exist. So it would be impossible for me to add up all of these numbers. So we can use our ratio to determine if the series is convergent or divergent. So if the ratio is in between negative 1 and 1, it's convergent and the sum exists, and we can approximate it. But if the ratio is greater than 1 or equal to it, less than or equal to negative 1, we say the series is divergent and the sum does not exist. So here is how I figure out the sum of a convergent geometric series. To figure out the sum of an infinite number of terms, I just take my first term and divide it by 1 minus the ratio. So again, just like every question that we've done before, we're going to identify what we know and substitute it into the formula when it is applicable. So let's go back to that original problem that I said, you know, all the mathematicians would, you know, shuckle along with this. Let's see why. So first of all, it's an infinite number of mathematicians. Okay, so they walk into a diner and they'll look at this. So the, the first one orders one Coke, the second one half a Coke, the third one a quarter of a Coke, and so on, because there's an infinite number of them. So let's go back to that idea of convergent versus divergent. Let's figure out what the ratio is. I'm going to take my second term and divide it by my first term, which is a half. So since the ratio is less than one, I know this is a convergent infinite series. So I can use my infinite sum. So my infinite sum that we just looked at over here again is my first term divided by 1 minus my ratio. So my first term, 1 coke, over 1 minus the ratio. So the sum of the infinite term is 1 over, 1 take away a half is a half. And 1 divided by a half is just 2. So every mathematician that comes in after the one, after the first one is ordering half and half. So we're going to get a quarter, an eighth of 1 16th, 1 32, etc. It's going to get smaller and smaller, which is why the waitress says, I'm just pouring you two glasses of Coke. So let's try an example. I want to find a sum if it exists, an infinite sum. So it all comes down to the ratio. So let's look at the ratio. The ratio is any term, for example, term two, divided by the term before it. So my ratio is one third, which tells me my sum exists because it's a convergent series. So the sum of the infinite terms is going to equal to my first term over one minus my ratio. 
So that will be 1 over 2 thirds. And 1 over 2 thirds is just 3 halves or 1.5. In other words, as I add up these numbers, even though it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it will converge upon 1.5. So let's look in the calculator to see if that's true. So I generated the first 10 sums, okay? And so you can see it's getting closer and closer and closer until when it looks at just 10 terms, the calculator's like, okay, this is 1.499999. Can we just call it 1.5 and call it a day? So you can see it actually works. So the approximate sum, 1.5. Let's try this one. 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. Let's find the ratio. So the ratio is any term, for example, term 2, divided by the term before it. So my ratio is 2. So since my ratio is greater than or equal to 1, this is divergent. So I can say that no sum exists meaning that this series is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm not going to be able to add it up. So looking at my calculator, let's look. Here's the first 11 sums. So the sum of the first 11 terms, look at this, already up to 4,094. So I skipped a whole bunch. Look at by the time we get down to the sum of the first 35. It's so big that it's in scientific notation. This is a 6, 9 with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So this is getting really big, really fast. So that's why we can say no sum exists. It is a divergent series. Okay, let's try an example here. And I like this example because I'm gonna compare infinite series to geometric series. Okay, so we have a pile driver. So that's a machine that bangs in posts in construction into the ground. So we have a pile driver striking a metal post in the ground. With the first impact, the post moves 30 centimeters. With the second impact, it moves 27, and it keeps on going. Now we're going to assume that these distances form a geometric sequence. And I want to know the total distance the post moves after being struck eight times. So eight is my number. The very first impact is 30 centimeters. And then let's look what happens. I go 30 centimeters and then 27 centimeters and so on. Since it forms a geometric sequence, I know that I can figure out my ratio, which would be any term divided by the term in front of it. So 27 over 30, which in lowest terms would be 9 over 10. So my ratio is 0 0.9. So I want to know the total distance it moves, which is S sub n. Now, I don't know my last term, so I can't use this formula. So I'm going to use this one. So after being struck eight times, let's figure out how far it moved. So this is 300 times my ratio, 0 0.9, to the exponent of 8 minus 1 all over my ratio, 0 0.9, take away 1. So I'm going to put all of this into my calculator and you do the same. And let's see if we get the same answer. So I'm going to do 30 times 0 0.9 to the exponent of 8 and then subtract 1. And then I'll divide that by, in brackets, 0 0.9 take away 1. So I get that it has moved 170.9 centimeters. Okay, so what we're going to do is compare that to the same scenario, but this time the pile driver is hitting it infinitely many times. So it's indefinitely. So it's just, they have it set up and it's just gonna continue to hit the post into the ground. So indefinitely meaning infinity. So the sum of the infinite is going to be the first term, 30 over 1 minus my ratio. So putting that into my calculator, I'm going to have 30 over 0 0.1, which is 300 centimeters. So that would be the convergent sum, okay? And I know it's convergent because my ratio, again, is less than 1. So if it continually struck the post, it would eventually move 300 centimeters, and at some point, even though it was being repeatedly hit, it would not move any further. So this is a great example comparing these two um, concepts together.
Okay, last two questions I want to do come from your homework questions. So in the past, I've been asked these by homework, uh, these homework questions quite a bit, so I thought I would include them in my notes. So I want to express an infinite geometric series, this number 0 0.9 repeating, and then determine the sum of the series. So let's talk about what 0 0.9 is. It's just a repeating decimal. So 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 etc. So if I wanted to write that as a sum, we're going to do this by place value. So my first place value is the tenths. Then to get to my second place value, I'll zero out the tenths and go to the hundredths. So if I were to add these two numbers together, I would get 0.99. That's why I need that zero there. So if I go over to the, this is the tenths, hundredths, if I go over to the thousandths, I zero out the tenths and the hundredths, and then I have 0 0.009, and I just keep on going. So a repeating decimal can be written as an infinite geometric series. So if I want to find out the infinite sum, let's come up with what the ratio is. So the ratio is any term divided by the term before it. Okay, so if on my calculator I took 0 0.09 and divided it by 0 0.9, I would get 0 0.1, which is my ratio. So infinite series, because it is a non-ending decimal, is my first term, which is 0 0.9, divided by 1 minus 0 0.1. So what this would be is 0 0.9 over 0 0.9, which is just 1. So at some point, we can call 0 0.9999999 repeating forever. We can call that 1 because it approaches 1. Okay, so that's a nice one because you can actually wrap your head around that and see how it approaches 1. Let's try one where I have two digits repeating. So this is 0 decimal 47, 47, 47, 47, etc. If I wanted to represent that as a sum, I could do the same strategy. So 0 0.47 plus, so that's my first second set. To get to my second set, I have to zero out the tenths and the hundredths and add 0.47, because if I was to add these two together, I would get 47, 47. And then again, I could zero out everything that I have and have another 47. Okay, so looking at this, my ratio is 0 0.0047 over 0 0.47. And let's figure out what my ratio is there. So any term, for example, the second term, divided by the term in front, and I get 0 0.01. That's my ratio. So using our infinite formula, the sum of the infinite numbers, the infinite sum of this geometric series is my first term over 1 minus my ratio. So that would be 0 0.47 over 0 0.99. Now let's put that into our calculator so we can put our fraction into lowest terms. So that would be 47 over 99. And if you actually on your calculator do 47 divided by 99, you would get 0.47 repeating. Okay, so now when you come to those homework questions, you'll be able to do it. So I hope this idea of infinite number of terms makes sense. And whenever you look at the number 8, you can think about infinity but you need to be quiet because number eight is infinity sleeping. I'll let you think about that, see if you get that. So you guys can do practice questions one and two, and when you're done those, you can move on to the textbook questions. So I hope that this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.